random guy named Juan has been a pretty busy guy lately, but not doing the things that you would think he would be doing. You would think that attempting to save his country from evil, terrible, horrible socialism, he would have been trying to turn empty grocery store shelves into full grocery store shelves. But he hasn't. And in case anyone hasn't heard, the U.S. has appointed Elliot Abrams to be the special... Oh, no, wait, that's not Elliot Abrams. Hold on. Um, oh, here he is. Yeah, this is Elliot Abrams right here. Um, Elliot Abrams to be the special envoy to Venezuela. Now, this is an interesting character, convicted of lying before Congress during the Iran-Contra affair. I could do an entire series of videos on the late 1980s and what led to the invasion of Panama. But funny thing about random guy named Juan, speaking of, he is actually the second random guy named Juan. Who remembers the first? That's right, Juan Requesens. That's right, the starving Venezuelan 400-pound monster that decided he was going to be the leader of the opposition movement until the powers that be realized they had uh, an image problem trying to sell this story about uh, starvation and food shortages when they had a human bulldozer as their spokesperson. And then, of course, he was implicated in the assassination attempt, and after that, they realized it was a giant loser. But yeah, random guy named Juan, random guy named Juan, has been a very, very busy guy. Instead of attempting to shore up food supplies and medicine like Nicolas Maduro has, what has he been doing? Interesting story here on Reuters. They're attempting of course, to paint the image of what's happening down there one way, when really, when you read, actually read the content, you'll see something else is going on. Now, what, random guy named Juan has been self-appointed for, what, less than a week? I'll go ahead and read this from you. Um, this is, of course, Reuters, January 25, 3.05 p.m., Venezuela's most important foreign asset, its 10 billion U.S. refining arm Sitco Petroleum, is hunkering down to arm itself with a legal strategy to block efforts for its board to be removed and its revenues diverted to an opposition government. Really? Juan Guaido, the head of the opposition-controlled Congress, who proclaimed himself president this week, is considering naming a new team to lead Sitco, two sources told Reuters. So really, that's number one on his list of shit to do. See, that's what a lot of Americans don't understand. If you've been with my channel, you do. But, of course, if you're just looking at the mainstream media, you won't. They love to paint this idea of Nicolas Maduro being the cause of the starvation, the cause of the suffering, the cause of the problems. Or when that doesn't work, sometimes they just go for the uh, larger idea of just socialism in general, completely ignoring the fact that billions and billions of dollars in revenue have been seized by the United States, not allowing the government of Venezuela to purchase food purchase medicine, purchase things for their oil rigs to maintain the production of oil. People don't get this, that this is a Venezuelan company. And they have been, and I've said this before, they were our allies for years and have been. That's why so many Venezuelans live here, have bank accounts here, have businesses here. If they've truly just been this horrible, terrible, mortal enemy. How many North Korean businesses are in the United States? There aren't. How many Iranian businesses? Not maybe a few more, but not as many. This is what they don't want you to know. The Europeans have seized billions. The Bank of England has seized billions in gold. And we've seized billions of Venezuelan assets. Of course that's going to cause starvation. Of course that's going to cause shortages. That's going to cause all sorts of problems. And strangely enough, it all coincides back to 2014. And I defy anyone, please do, if you think you can prove me wrong, go to the internet and try to find an article prior to 2015 that talks about starvation in Venezuela. You won't. 
because it was 2015 when Barack Obama issued the illegal executive order labeling Venezuela a, what is it, emergency threat to the United States. And then, of course, with sanction after sanction after sanction, and then this administration, the current one, doubling down, standing shoulder to shoulder with Barack Obama. No light in between him and the current administration whatsoever regarding this issue. It just got worse and worse. That's why Venezuela had to turn to places like Russia, Turkey, China. We were their first choice. And I'd like to um, address Juan directly if this gets to him. You do realize, random guy named Juan, that you were not their first choice. See, the first choice America wanted to do was try to kill Chavez and then try to kill Maduro and then let Radonsky take over. And then when that didn't work, they chose uh, the behemoth Juan Requesens. They tried that next. And then they've tried multiple times to kill Maduro. You are a last resort. The U.S. government doesn't believe in you, doesn't believe in your ideas. You're a tool. You are a tool, and if they are successful, you will be thrown away and gotten rid of, more than likely, because you are a liability. And I need to, if there's any Venezuelans within the sound of my voice, I need to ask you an honest question. Would you rather have someone who's driven a bus, worked a double shift, had to earn a paycheck, someone who stood a post, served as a soldier, the ideas of these people, would you rather have these or would you rather have the United States telling you who your leader should be? See, this is what the U.S. right here cannot afford to have happen again. The reason I brought this up is because this shows why everything changed after January 10th of this year. You see, this election back in 2013 showed that it was a close election and that there were two parties vying for control of Venezuela and the Chavistas won by 1.5%. We have elections like this in our country. The U.S. could not afford to have this happen. They could not afford to lose a free and fair election. That's why they recognized Nicolas Maduro as the legal president and didn't call him a usurper until after the 10th of January. Because this election, where he defeated Radonsky, no one had issue with. And the reason that there was, let me find the right, this allegation in 2018 of it not being a free and fair election was because the Democratic Unity Roundtable chose to not participate. What would have happened in our last election, Americans within the sound of my voice, if one of the two major parties had dropped out? If the Republicans had dropped out or the Democrats had dropped out and it had just been, let's just say, the Republicans and the Libertarians and the Green Party. It would have looked very lopsided, wouldn't it? And of course, what if the party that dropped out then said, well, it wasn't free and fair because we didn't participate? That's the bullshit game they're trying to pull. That's why there is this article out now saying that uh, all these countries are calling for new elections, even though there was just an election. What's wrong with the last one? Well, the last one, they didn't have the right guy. See, this guy, of course, he's got the, the pretty smile, and he's got the look, and he's got all this kind of stuff, so they think they can probably squeak this guy in just using PSYOP tactics. And they can turn the screws really, really, really hard and get a lot more people into the suffering mode so that they vote against their sovereignty. They vote against Venezuela. And oh, mark my words, guys. Speaking back to the Venezuelans, you will not be Venezuelans if you get rid of Nicolas Maduro. You will be U.S. puppets. The first thing that will happen, and I'm going to call it right here, I'm going to call it right now, and anybody can hold me to it. They will get rid of the Bolivar. You will be dollarized. Venezuelan economy will no longer have its own currency. You will be slaved to 
U.S. dollar for the rest of your existence if you decide you want to stand with this guy. You will be a vassal state. You will be just like Argentina is now. Every hiccup in our economy will be a hiccup in yours. Everything you do will be at the service of the United States. You will not be Venezuelans anymore if you choose this guy. You mark my words. You think the U.S. cares about your sovereignty? You think it cares about your borders? You will be overrun with Colombians, Brazilians, you name it. And they will turn that entire continent into one conglomeration of nothing. Of basically slave labor. So that big U.S. corporations and big U.S. oil can go down there and basically take everything they want from your country. And when they're done, they will leave you penniless and broke or in a grave. That's what the U.S. does. We are a wealthy country. We are a powerful country. We have full grocery stores. We have lots of gasoline. We have all sorts of money floating around, but it comes at a pretty awful price. And that's coming to an end very soon. Because the world has woken up to it. So if you end up on the wrong side of history here, just understand. Your guy, the guy you believe in, the guy you think is your leader, his first order of business was to go and try to toss all of the executives out of Sitco so that the U.S. could control it again. Order of business number two was putting Elliot Abrams in charge of... I'm sorry, that's not Elliot Abrams. This, this is Elliot Abrams. I don't know why I keep making that mistake. A guy who is a convicted criminal is going to be our special envoy to you. So I'll let you put the, piece, the pieces of the puzzle together for yourself. Like, share, subscribe, but do remember, before current random guy named Juan, there was this random guy named Juan, Juan Requesens, who decided he wanted to sell the idea of being a starving Venezuelan and then try to kill your leader. Your, your leader that actually won an election against the Elliot Abrams types. Like, share, subscribe.